What's up, everybody? This is Rich with Kesteva, back with our midweek mini episode going over another PE example problem. Before we begin, remember, like, subscribe, um, leave any comments if you have any suggestions or critiques on this lesson. Okay, let's get going. The beam shown is subjected to a uniform load and a moving concentrated load, and we're given design data. So the uniform load is 1 KLF, kip per lineal foot, and a concentrated live load of 10 kips. Assumption. The uniform live load may extend the entire length of beam from A to C. So it can move anywhere about the beam. So from here all the way to here, that point load can move across the whole thing. The max live load shear in kips on the right of support B is most nearly. So we're looking right there. They want to know what is your VU. All right, so where I'm going to jump to first is, as always with me, uh, the AISC steel manual. This would be where I'd go to as we have some kind of static-like problems here, although we do have that moving load, but not to worry. So we're going to flip over to table 3-23. And we're going to start, so we have a hinge here. We need to be wary of that hinge. So first we need to find the reaction at that hinge point. And the way that we do that is actually we take this chunk from the hinge to support A. That basically becomes uh, a simple span. And we need to find a reaction point at that hinge. So since it's now basically a, uh, a simple span, we know that we have something like this with a uniform live load of 1 KLF. So we need to find, and we know in this case R1 equals R2. So R1 equals R2, which equals, as we all know, WL over 2. That breaks down to 1 KLF times a distance of 48 feet. So that's the distance to the pin, or to the hinge, back to support A, divided by 2. That gets us 24 kips as a reaction at the hinge. So now, what we can ultimately look at is a system like this. Well, now that looks an awful lot like a propped cantilever. So, next thing we're going to do is go to the same table, table 3-23 in our AISC manual, but we're going to go to the propped cantilever section, and what we're first going to analyze as a propped cantilever with a distributed load. So we know we have one KLF. And again, let's remember we're trying to find right here, just inside of reaction B, just the right-hand side of reaction B. Now, if we looked at a prop cantilever with dis uh, distributed load at our shear diagram, we have something like this. And what we want, so this is our shear diagram, and what we want is that shear value. And that is denoted as V3 in the table. So if we go to the equation for V3, we'll see that it equals A being the cantilever, L being the prop, W being our distributed load. So let's plug in. We get the following. And that gets us 31.2 kips. So we're going to hang on to that value until later. So now the next thing we need to do is the same thing, only looked at it as a propped cantilever with a point load at the end. So we'll have this condition now, because we have that reaction from our hinge, remember, of 24 kips. If we stay in table 3-23, and we check out our shear diagram for this condition, it looks something like this. Again, that's our shear diagram. And we now want, because again, just like above, we were here, and our location is here. So we want that shear value. That is denoted as V1 in the equations. V1 is equal to PA over L. Again, uh, A is our cantilever, L is our prop. And then P is just the point load at the end. So that breaks down into the following. That equals 4.8 kips. So again, we'll hang on to that value as well. So with just the distributed load across the entire uh, A, B span, we would have 
a shear value equal to 31.2 kips plus 4.8 kips. But we still have that moving load of 10 kips. Now, in this case, the greatest shear value that can be added from that moving load would be when that shear value is directly at the point of interest. So that's pretty straightforward. That means we just need to add an additional 10 kips to our shear value already. So if we add the 10 kips, the sum is going to equal 46 kips. And that is going to be our answer. Now, you might get tripped up a little bit, but you can work your way through it. So if you were to look back and say, well, what if I thought that adding that moving load to the end of the cantilever, so an additional 10 kips on top of the 24 kip reaction, I thought that might give me a worse or shear. Well, you can do that. You can check to make sure that that's not the case. Um, again, you would do your propped cantilever with a point load at the end, and we'd run the same equation, so V... 1 is equal to PA over L. Again, A is the cantilever, L is the prop. P this time would be 34 kips. A is still 12 feet, and L is still 60 feet. That gets you 6.8 kips. So now your V would be 31.2 plus 6.8. And then now you can't include that 10 kip because it's it's being applied in this scenario at the end of the cantilever. So that just equals 38 kips, which is less than 46 kips. So we know that that is not the case. So let's look back up at the top. And we can see with our handy green, the answer then is going to be D, 46 kips. That's it for today. Said it at the beginning, but I'll say it again. Like, subscribe if you like this video, leave a comment if you want to know more or have other questions about this problem or just have other questions that you would like me to do an example on. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.